Okay, right, is, is your witness out there? Is the witness out there? He's down the hall, Judge. All right. He's down the hall. All right, bringing the jury in. All right, be seated, everyone. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Hope everyone had a good evening. We're going to continue with the trial. We're going to resume with the testimony of Detective Bailey. Officer, can you bring in Detective, Detective Bailey, Bailey, please? All right, somebody's got to mute your computer, please. It's not just muted, it's the sound has to be on completely. Muted and the sound has to be turned off. I'll take care of that. I'll take care of it. Sorry, Mara. It's the Uh, because of the break, we'll re-swear Detective Bailey. Please place your left hand on the Bible. Raise your right hand. Do you swear in the presence of Almighty God that the testimony given to this court regarding this matter shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Please state your name and spell your last name for the record. Detective Brian Bailey, B-A-I-L-E-Y. Thank you. Thank you, Detective. Have a seat. Please keep your voice up nice and loud. Again, if you don't understand a question, please indicate that. I'll have counsel rephrase. We'll resume the testimony, the direct testimony of Detective Bailey. Go ahead, Mr. Shellhorn. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, Detective. Good morning. I think yesterday uh, we concluded your testimony talking about uh, some articles of clothing that you recovered from the rear of the farmhouse. Yes. Uh, and you had identified two articles of clothing that you recovered near the stairway, a red and black shirt, S-182, and a yellow sweatshirt, S-183. Yes. Did you collect any other clothing from outside the farmhouse area uh, in the yard? Yes. And what was that? Uh, a red Nike polo shirt. And uh, Judge, I'd like permission to display uh, a photo. It's S216. It has uh, been moved into evidence. Very well. What's the number? 216. Detective, I know we were just here yesterday, but if you could just reorient the jury uh, to 216 and what the vantage point of this photo is. <clears throat> That's the rear of the residence, um, just off the driveway to the back a little bit, and that is the white trailer where Mr. Barrison was when I arrived on scene. And I think you indicated yesterday that he was in that area receiving attention from some medical folks? That's correct. Are you aware that certain articles of clothing or items of potential evidentiary value were left in the area when Mr. Barrison was removed from the scene? Yes. Uh, and I'm going to direct your attention next to S-250 in evidence. What is S-250 a picture of? That is a picture of the clothing um, located near Mr. Barrison. And... Uh, was the condition of the clothing in that area the same as the condition of the clothing that you recovered in the back of the farmhouse? Yes. And can you tell the jury what that was? 
that is, uh, the, the condition of the clothing was saturated, it was soaking wet, um, and it was the, the red shirt and the, the shoes. And I'm going to direct your attention, I think it's on the desk in front of you there, to what S186. What is S186? It's the red Nike polo shirt. And uh, how can you tell that that's the red Nike polo shirt? It's in the bag uh, that I collected it in. Judge, at this point, I'd like to move S-186 into evidence and show it to the jury. Any objection? No, Judge. 186, red Nike shirt, be accepted into evidence. It may be displayed to the jurors. Go ahead, Detective. All right, Detective, you've removed the uh, shirt from the bag. Does that appear to be in the same or substantially the same condition, although it's dry now, as when you recovered it on August 7, 2019? Yes. And uh, if you could, Judge, with your permission, if the detective could walk it down in front of the jury into the gallery showing the front on the first uh, pass and then the back on the second pass. Certainly. Go ahead, Detective. I guess for purposes of the record, it would be the uh, the outside of the shirt because it's cut on the first pass, and then it would be the inside of the shirt on the second pass. Yes. Just for the for the record, I have no objection to these uh, items coming into evidence that we just handed to the witness. Judge, I just handed forward to Detective Bailey S one seventy nine, S one eighty, and S one eighty one. Those were items of evidence recovered at the scene. I'll ask that they be admitted at this time so the detective can show them. All right, S-179, 180, 181 will be admitted into evidence. I believe 181 is already in evidence. But I believe that's true. 179 and 180 will be admitted. Detective Bailey, at some point while you were in the area of the scene, I know that you had indicated that you marked certain items of evidence with uh, placards. Correct. And I'm going to draw your attention first to S207. We're just pulling it up. testified to this photo yesterday? Correct. Again, just uh, for purposes of the record, can you reorient the jury to the angle or the vantage point that S207 is from? 
This is a mid-range photograph located in the driveway of a placard number two that is covering a potential piece of evidence, in this case a shell casing. And is that placard uh, the larger placard covering this, the smaller placard? Yes. I'm going to direct your attention to S234. What is S234 a picture of? That's a picture of a shell casing. And which placard is next to that shell casing? A number one. And do you see that in this photo? Yes. Where is it? Top right of the photo. Was there any significance to the numbers of the placards that you placed down on the various pieces of evidence? No, they were just used as reference points for photographs. Now the shell casing that we're looking at uh, in S234, uh, did you collect that shell casing? Yes. And do you see it in front of you marked as S179? Yes. If you would, uh, please just uh, remove that and show it to the jury. This might be tough to open. Now, Detective, you uh, testified that that's a shell casing? Correct. Based on your training, education, and experience, what is a shell casing? A shell casing is, <clears throat> uh, when it's fully intact, it's a bullet. When it's discharged from a weapon, a firearm, it's now a discharged shell casing. So I'm, I'm sure we'll have more testimony about ballistics later on in the trial, but uh, are you saying that when a bullet is shot out of a gun? The projectile comes from the front of the barrel while this is ejected from the ejector port. And you located that in the area of the uh, driveway behind the farmhouse? Yes. All right, thank you. Next, I'll direct your attention uh, to S204. And what is S204 a picture of? Uh, it's a mid-range photograph of another placard, too, um, in the back patio area of the driveway. And I believe you testified to this photo as well yesterday uh, that you took this photo uh, just after it started raining? Correct. I direct your attention to S236. <clears throat> what is S236 a picture of? It's a picture of the shell casing that is located underneath the, uh, the fire debris can with the evidence marker on top of it. And can you remind the jury why you went back and put that uh, can over the top of the shell casing? With the weather that we were getting and the amount of rain that we got in such a little bit of time, uh, I decided to use fire debris cans to kind of uh, dig them around the shell casing so we wouldn't lose any potential evidence. Was that fire debris can uh, used or was it new? Brand new. Next I'll uh, show you two S237. What is S237 a picture of? Uh, spent shell casing. And uh, would this be the same shell casing that you just indicated you had originally marked with marker number two? Yes. Um, can you describe, obviously, you know, we're looking at the picture, but can you describe where that shell casing was found and what the condition was? Uh, the shell casing was found in the rear of the driveway, just off to the, to the left um, in the grass area. But being with the water, it was slowly getting submerged in water, so that's why we preserved it and covered it. And uh, you have S-180 in front of you. Correct. What is S-180? It is that shell casing. Did you collect that shell casing? Yes. Did you put it into that envelope? Yes. And if you could just uh, remove it from the envelope and show it to the jury. After you collected the shell casings, as well as all the evidence you collected, where did you take it? Uh, it was secured into the command post um, that was located on scene, and when we were clear from the scene, those pieces of evidence were then transported back to the crime lab and secured in the evidence room. 
And at some point, are you aware whether certain evidence were submitted either within your agency or to other agencies for further examination? Yes. Do you know if those shell casings were uh, ultimately given to someone from your agency for examination? Yes, they were. And do you know who that was? Yes. Who was that? Uh, forensics examiner Bill Stitt. Now I'm going to show you next uh, S239. What is S239 a picture of? Uh, it's a mid-range of the rear of the driveway, <clears throat> slowly coming into the back of the residence with the evidence placard number one, marking a uh, magazine. And again, was there any significance to these placards? No. Uh, what do we see in the top right of the uh, picture uh, in between the, I guess, the, the truck and the, uh, <clears throat> Those white items. What's the yellow item in the top right there? That, those are the evidence placards that were marking the shell casings in the driveway. And would that have been shell casing the first one that you showed, S179? Yes. Uh, all right, so with respect to the item that we're looking at in the foreground of this picture, I'm going to direct your attention to S240. What is S240 a picture of? A magazine. <clears throat> and what is a magazine? A uh, magazine is what contains the cartridges for a handgun. And is this a close-up photo of the magazine that you located in that grassy area? Yes. Were there any bullets located inside of this magazine? No. And I believe that's already been moved into evidence as well. You have S181 in front of you. Yes. Is S-181 the magazine that you recovered from that grassy area? Yes. And how do you know that? Uh, it's in the bag that I put it in. Is your handwriting on the bag? Yes. All right, Detective, when you were uh, finished searching the area of the, uh, the farmhouse and processing that area, did you search and process any other areas of the property? Yes, uh, then proceeded up to the dressage area, um, processed the clubhouse in the office. All right, Detective Bailey, I'm showing you what's been marked as S301 in evidence. What is S301 a picture of? Uh, that's an overall the entrance working our way into the office. So this would be coming into the office from where? The clubhouse. And I'm going to show you what's been marked as S302. What is S302 a picture of? That's after we entered and photographing our way back towards where we came from. Were these photographs taken before you had conducted your search? Correct. What is on the right-hand side of that picture, S302? Uh, safe. Did you search that safe? Yes. Uh, did you recover a number of items from within the office area? Yes. And did those items include certain electronic devices and uh, various paperwork? Yes. Were those all uh, marked as evidence and then logged into evidence? Yes. In the same method that you described earlier? Yes. All right, I'm going to ask you some questions about uh, searching the safe. Um, I'm going to show you S303 in evidence. What is S303 a picture of? Uh, that's an overall of the safe. And was the safe uh, in that condition, meaning the door was closed when you got into the room? Yes. Was it unlocked? I believe so. And you were able to open the door and get into it? Yes. All right, next I'll show you S304. What is S304 a picture of? Uh, that's an overall photograph of the inside of the, with the contents in the safe. And is that a fair and accurate picture of the contents of the safe before you conducted any search? Yes. Meaning that that's how the items all appeared when you first opened the safe? Yes. Judge, if I could have permission to approach. Certainly.
Detective, did you uh, collect a number of items that were located in that safe? Yes. And if you could just describe for the jury what some of the items that we can see in the picture S304 are. Uh, there's a pink and black gun case. Um, <clears throat> there's a... And, and where is that? That's on the, located on the top shelf. And what's next to that pink and black orange case? Uh, pink and black gun case. There is a dummy magazine located directly to the right of that pink and black case. Can you tell the jury what a dummy magazine is? A uh, dummy magazine, you can't put any rounds in, any bullets in, um, and that would go into a, a weapon to keep the weapon safe. What would be uh, those items that are located to the back left on the top shelf behind the pink and black gun case? Those are various different types of ammunition. And did you, uh, were you there when that ammunition was cataloged? Yes. <clears throat> Moving down to the next shelf below that, on the, on the left-hand side of the safe, what are those items on the left-hand side? Those are rifles. And were you there when those items were collected by the Washington Township Police? I wasn't physically in the room, but during that night, yes. Um, to the right of that, on that uh, second shelf down in the very center of the picture, what is that uh, item that looks black and copper? That is a box of 9mm rounds. And what is behind those that box of 9mm uh, rounds? There is two revolvers and one semi-automatic handgun. All right, uh, Detective, I had handed up a number of items just now. Uh, S-306 is one of the items, excuse me, S-190 is one of the items that I have handed forward. And I'm going to show you a picture, S-306. Uh, what is S-306 a picture of? That's a box uh, containing 9mm rounds. And did you uh, photograph that as it was when you opened the safe? Yes. Can you describe the condition of that box and the state of that box when you opened <laughs> the safe? The box was partially opened. Uh, what we're looking at in the, the back of the photo or the middle of the photo, the back of the box was slightly torn um, and it was open until approximately the fourth row of, of bullets. And I think um, to your left there, there is a pointer that we tried charging last night. I don't know if it will work on this picture, but if you could just point out to the jury. Can I stand? Yes. Yes. Uh, can you see it? Yeah. It's, uh, so the box was, was partially open, ripped up at the top here. Um, if you can see me circling on it, I'm trying to do my best. But... Um, it was also open until approximately the, the fourth row of bullets, like midway. And you, did you collect that box of bullets? Yes. And do you see that box in front of you, or do you see a package, uh, an item of evidence, S-190? Yes. What is S-190? S-190 is the box of ammunition, 9mm round. The same ammunition that we're looking at Focus in S-306? Yes. Could you open that, please? If I could ask that... Hold on. That's not in evidence yet. Are you moving it into evidence? I'm sorry, Judge. I thought when I handed them forward, I asked them to be in evidence. I apologize. I don't... No I'm not sure you gave the numbers. Judge, I had handed forward S-190. Okay. All right, S-190 is in evidence. Go ahead, Detective. Judge, if I could just at the same time ask for S-191, S-202, S-199, S-200, and S-201. Any objection to those items? Mr. Blankus? No. <clears throat> All right, those items are in evidence. You may uh, stand up and show the item to the jurors. Detective, if I could ask that you could open that box uh, carefully and pull out the 
tray with the, the bullets in it. And then, Judge, if I could ask that that could be walked around to show the jury the uh, condition of approximately how far open it was at the time the detective searched the safe. Certainly. Go ahead, detective. Thank you, Detective Bailey. If you can put that back into the envelope, please. Detective, we're pulling up next S305. What is that a picture of? It's a picture of a pink and black uh, gun case and located directly to the right of that is the dummy magazine. Now, what was the, and you took this photograph before you collected those items? Yes. Uh, what was the condition or state of the black and pink uh, gun case? It was, op it was open. And, and how does it open and close? With a zipper. Uh, do you see in front of you S191? If I could ask, uh, that, that has been moved into evidence, if I could ask you to open that to show the jury. And is that currently open or closed? Open. Could you uh, open it for the jury and show the inside? Detective Billy, what is the blue uh, plastic item that's inside the gun case? This is, these are typically used to um, stick through the barrel or up through the, the chamber to make the weapon safe, and it's, it's basically a flag so um, somebody else would know the weapon is safe as well. And that was inside of the gun case when you collected it? Correct. Was there any other item or items inside the gun case when you collected it? No. Thank you. Now, you indicated in S305 that there was also an orange uh, dummy magazine next to the case? Correct. I'm going to direct your attention to S202, which I think you have in front of you. Yes. Are you aware if that item was collected by the Washington Township Police? Yes. And uh, I'm going to ask you to open S202. And that has been moved into evidence, so I would ask if you could... Judge, again, if this could be walked down and shown to the jury back in the gallery. Certainly. Go ahead, detective. Detective, if you could just show one side on the first pass and then the second side on the next pass. Uh, detective, you indicated that there were a number of other guns located uh, in the safe? That's correct. And were those uh, taken into the custody of the Washington Township Police Department? That's correct, yes. Did you have a chance to look at those uh, firearms before they were taken? Yes. Were any of them loaded to your recollection? No. Now, you indicated that there were a number of uh, rifles or long guns on the left-hand side? Correct. Do you recall approximately how many? Uh, three. And was there any ammunition for uh, those guns? Yes. And I think you indicated there was uh, some ammunition on the te top left-hand shelf, uh, which is shown in S-304? Yes. 
you remember how, ha how many handguns there were inside the safe? There was three. Two revolvers and a semi-automatic. And I'll ask you first, I think you have those all on the uh, ground next to you, but I'll move. Judge, if I can just remove some of these other items. Certainly. I'll take these items out of your way. Detective Bailey, we'll start with S199. Do you have S199 in front of you? Yes. What is that? This is a uh, revolver pistol. And do you uh, know what caliber that was? I believe it's a 22. Uh, S S199, is that the Colt 45? This is the Colt 45, yes, I'm sorry. Um, are you aware whether there was any 45 caliber ammunition in the safe? There was not. Um, Judge, this has been moved into evidence. I'd like permission to show this item to the jury. No objection. All right, certainly go ahead, detective. What's it? What's 199. 199. <coughs> yes. And it may be easier. Uh, you yeah. walk it around if that's all right with the judge. That's fine. Detective, I don't think I asked you this question, but uh, are those guns in the same or substantially the same condition as when you saw them the night of August 7, 2019, aside from the fact that they may have safety mechanisms on them at this point? Yes. Next, I'm going to draw your attention to S200. Do you have that in front of you? Yes. What is S200? It is a semi-automatic uh, handgun. And do you know what uh, caliber that was? I believe this is a 380. Was there any 380 caliber ammunition located in the safe? No. Judge, with the court's permission, I'd like to show S200 to the jury. No objection. Certainly go ahead, detective. You may display it to the jurors. Detective, the last item I'm going to ask you about is S201. Do you have S201 in front of you? Yes. What is S201? It is a revolver. Do you know what caliber it is? Uh, 22. And was there any 22 caliber ammunition in the safe? Yes. Judge, with the court's permission, I'd like to show, uh, have the detective show S201 to the jury. Yes, go ahead. You may step down and display it to the jury.
Detective Bailey, are you aware whether those items were provided to Forensic Examiner Stitt from the Morris County Sheriff's Office? Yes. Judge, I don't have any further questions at this time for Detective Bailey. Fine, very good. Cross examination. Good morning, Detective Bailey. Good morning, sir. Now, your job basically, and correct me if I'm wrong, was to secure the scene and protect and document all potential evidence, correct? Correct. Now, when you got to the scene, would you agree with me that it was chaotic? Yes. Um, 40, 50 people running around doing different things, correct? I'm not sure on the number of people. How many would you estimate? I'm not sure. show you 11-1, which is the crime scene log. Sure. First of all, can you explain to the ladies and jurors what a crime scene log is? <clears throat> yes. A crime scene log is basically um, a log that somebody's going to be taking to document who's coming in and out of that scene. Um, so we have a record of, of times um, in and out, basically, of what different, whether it's a police officer whether it's emergency medical services, um, anybody that would, would be entering the scene. And were you the person in control of that log? No. Uh, can you take a look at that log and see if that refreshes your recollection as to whether or not there were approximately 40 to 50 different people in and out of that crime scene? There's numerous people throughout throughout the night. When you say numerous, in excess of 50 people, correct? I can count. No, don't don't count. Just does it refresh your memory? Yes. I would Proxy say so. Okay. Thank you. What was your answer? Uh, approximately 40 people. Oh. Thank you. What was that exhibit number? got to the scene, would you agree with me that it was not secured? Yes, it was not secured yet. It was still an active scene. And, and it was your job at that point, upon your arrival, to secure the scene and protect all the evidence, correct? 
<clears throat> I responded to this scene as a law enforcement officer. Again, it, it came across the radio as an active shooter, so I responded as a, a essentially a police officer. Uh, when I arrived on scene, my role as a law enforcement officer was still in play. Uh, being that I am crime scene minded, I did realize that there was p potential evidence on the scene, and I documented that evidence or preserved, tried to preserve that evidence to the best of my ability, while everything was still very chaotic. Okay, and and after was no longer chaotic. You were in control of securing all of the potential evidence, correct? Correct. And you indicated yesterday that in order to do your job, you need to talk to the officers to find out what happened, which allows you to take certain precautions with regards to securing evidence, correct? Correct. For instance, you were aware that it was a, 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 that a gun was used, correct? Correct. And, and you were told in, told a specific number of shots potentially had been fired, correct? Correct. I believe so. Correct. And how many shots were you told were fired? I believe it was a, approximately three, three shots. Okay. And uh, would you agree with me that every time? A 9mm gun discharges a bullet, a casing is discharged. Correct. How many casings did you find and preserve during your search? Two. One's missing, correct? Correct. Were you aware that there was a video camera on the side of the house that potentially could have captured the entire incident? Yes. Did you preserve that video at that time? No, based off of uh, process. I ask you, did no. you preserve it? No. Was the prosecutor's office there and also aware that there was a video camera that potentially could have preserved don't don't answer that question. You're asking his knowledge of what other people knew at the time. No, I'm asking if the Morris you said County yeah. You said if the prosecutor's there. office knew, that's their state of mind. Okay, I'll, I'll Rephrase the question, or withdraw it and then ask another one. Was the Morris County prosecutor's office or any representative from that office at the crime scene? on that night while you were doing your job? Yes. Now, on that day, you find both a handgun, two casings, and two magazines, correct? Correct. And those are the ones that have been introduced into evidence, correct? Correct. And, um, Judge, I don't believe that's accurate. No, that's not the testimony. The, uh, I, Rephrase your, your question. question. Okay. You found the handgun, correct? Correct. You, we've introduced into evidence one magazine, correct? Correct. And two shell casings, correct? Correct. Okay. As a crime scene investigator, do those items potentially have fingerprints and DNA on them? Yes. Were they submitted to a fingerprint expert and or a DNA expert at any time to your knowledge? No. Now, you indicated that when you got there and first were able to appraise the scene, it was not raining, correct? Correct. You 
You indicated yesterday that uh, you were waiting for a search warrant, correct? Correct. And at some point in time, you received a search warrant, correct? Correct. Which allowed you to search basically everything that uh, you requested on that warrant, correct? Correct. For instance, um, you were able to search my client's vehicle, correct? Correct. Um, in the photographs introduced by the prosecutor, there were two other vehicles and a trailer in the immediate area. Do you recall seeing them? Yes. Uh, are you aware of the fact that they belong to Robert Goodwin? Uh, I don't. Did you or anyone, to your knowledge, get a search warrant to search those vehicles which were included in your crime scene area? Uh, I did not, and to my knowledge, I'm, I don't know. Where was Robert Goodwin when you arrived? When I arrived, he was located in front of the, the police, one of the police vehicles that was parked in the driveway. Now, the prosecutor has introduced uh, numerous photographs of telephones that were on the scene, correct? Correct. Uh, there's one on the, uh, um, it's like a round table. Correct. Are you aware of the fact that that's my client's telephone? I was not at the time, no. Uh, there were two other phones located on an umbrella base at the bottom of the stairs, correct? Correct. And they were basically on top of each other, correct? Correct. And when you first got to the scene, um, you photographed those items in the exact location that they were found, correct? Correct. And then you tried to protect them uh, because of the rain with, with plastic, correct? Yes, yes. Now, with, with regards to uh, clothing that's been introduced into evidence by the prosecutor, uh, specifically the yellow sweatshirt and red t-shirt uh, with the bullet defects in them. Upon seeing them, you were aware that they belonged to the alleged victim, correct? Yes. And would you agree with me that you believed it was important to preserve them, correct? Yes. Because certain evidential things can be uh, had from those items of clothing, correct? Correct. Now, in the warrant, it indicated that you were able to take samples of my client's hands for gunshot residue, correct? Correct. Now, Gunshot residue is basically gunpowder which is expelled both from the weapon towards the back, which would get on a person's hand, and from the front, which potentially could get on someone's clothing, correct? Correct. So the gunshot residue basically goes in both directions when a weapon is filed, correct? Correct. Now, in the warrant, you were given permission to swab my client's hands to make a determination if he had any gunshot residue on his hands, correct? Correct. Did you or anyone to your knowledge request to do the same thing on either Lauren Cataract's or Robert Goodwin's hands? Not to my knowledge. With regards to the clothing, were you aware that Lauren Cataract has indicated that she was shot at close distance? Yes. Did anyone, to your knowledge, conduct gunshot residue evaluations on her clothing to either confirm 
or verify that she was shot at close range? Yes. And what were the results of that? Hold on. Did he do it? No. Well, he can't oh. answer that then. It's hearsay. I'll withdraw the question. He did do it, Judge. I'm sorry? He did do it. What? Hold on. Say that again? This witness did it? Yes. Oh, all right. Then he can answer it. I thought he said no, that he didn't do it. I think, I think the question was about whether there was any swabbings of anyone's hands. No, no, no. He, no, that's not what he said. He, he was asking the follow-up question, the results of an examination that was done to the clothing. Well, he, he could tell what the results were. Well, he, but he didn't do the test. Judge, I'll, I'll withdraw the question. He did do the test. It was negative. There, there well, was let me no see that sidebar. Just rephrase your question, please. Set a foundation for us, please. Sir, are, are you an expert with regards to... He's, he's not qualified as an expert. <coughs> I want to he, ask the question if I can, Judge. No, but no, are you going to... You can't ask a question if he's an expert and have him say yes without qualifying him as an expert to render an opinion. If that's what you want to do with him, then qualify him as an expert. You can't just ask him if he's an expert without qualifying him and ask him his opinion. I wasn't going to ask his opinion, Judge. I was well, then why are you asking him if he's an expert? An expert has a specific designation under the law. Understood. If you're going to ask him that as an expert, you have to qualify him as an expert. Otherwise, don't ask him if he's an expert. Question, please. Officer, do you have training with regards to uh, examination, examining gunshot rescue? 
I have training using an infrared camera and what results would look like. And, and where did you get that training? <clears throat> Through Fujifilm. And how long was that training? Um, to my knowledge, it was an eight-hour uh, eight hour course. So, so basically you've had eight hours of training, correct? Eight hours of training, correct. And, and the method that you used uh, is what in this case? I used a Fujifilm X-T100, um, I believe, camera, infrared UV camera to photograph the items with different lens filters to produce different results. Okay, and uh, is there more a more sophisticated method to your knowledge to make that determination? To my knowledge, they could be tested with a presumptive test. And, and what's a presumptive test? What do you mean by that? It's a chemical-based test that you could um, basically swab uh, onto the item and see if there is potential results. And would you agree that that technique is far more accurate and reliable than just the uh, test that you did? No. Now, does the fact that the clothing was drenched have any impact on the test that you did? It could have a, an impact on any test to be conducted. If our test showed that there was any um, presence of any GSR, what we would have done is then used a, a presumptive test or sent that item to the lab. And you did it with regards to uh, Miss Cataract's clothing, correct? Correct. Did you do it with regards to my client's clothing? No. When you say did it, you're referring to the um, using the camera, right? Yes. Yes. All right. You understand that's what he was yes, talking sir. about? Yes. Yes. Sir. Okay. Stairs, correct? Correct. Um, did you see where that bullet went to? Can you rephrase that? Did you see where that bullet went to? I saw where the bullet struck the door and the potential flight path of that projectile, yes. And would you agree with me that the bullet went through the room and through a window uh, to the left or the right of the door? I believe that, yes, the flight path of that projectile did go out an exit window. Did you ever find that spent bullet? We did not find that projectile. Did, did you look for it? Yes. Did you use metal detectors to attempt to find it? Not that particular projectile, based on the flight path. So you have no idea what caliber bullet caused that defect in the door and or the window that it went through. Correct. And you are missing one, at least one casing, correct? Correct. Now, those items of clothing, Lauren Canarac, I believe you testified there were a Entrance and an exit defect, correct? That's correct. Which would indicate to you that the bullet went through her and her clothing, correct? That's correct. Did you find those bullets? No, we did not. Now, Clubhouse area. The prosecutor has showed you 
uh, photographs of the office area, correct? That's correct. And the door to that office area is a solid wooden door, <clears throat> correct? I believe so, yes. And when you walk into the office, that safe that you've, <coughs> you've testified to about is on your left, correct? Correct. The safe was closed, but it wasn't locked, correct? Correct. And I know you've testified to that pink and black case and items associated with that. Uh, there were, in fact, other weapons in there, correct? That's correct. And there was, for instance, a, a 22 revolver? Yes. With ammunition? Yes. And, and there were numerous long guns, including a shotgun, correct? Yes, with I believe so. With boxes of shotgun shells that fit those particular weapons, correct? Correct. Just have a moment, Judge. I think I'm about done. Sure. I have nothing further. Right. Redirect, Mr. Shellhorn. Yes, Your Honor. Detective Bailey, are you aware whether any metal detectors were used at the scene uh, to look for other shell casings or projectiles? Metal detectors were used on the scene, yes. And was that on August 7th or August 8th or something else? Uh, it could have been in between on, on both days based off the circumstances of the scene. I don't know what time of night or day. But you're aware they were used? They were used, correct. <clears throat> have you ever... Do you have any experience with uh, shell casings being ejected from a bullet from personal experience in terms of your experience shooting at the range and that sort of thing? Yes. Have you ever investigated any other shooting incidents? Yes. Uh, so you have practical experience with investigating shooting incidents where there were shell casings? Yes. Do you have any experience with other investigations or personal experience as a, as a police officer with what could happen to a shell casing or how it gets ejected from a gun? Yes. Can you explain that to the jury? Uh, shell casings get ejected from a weapon. Um, it's not repetition. It's not the same every time. Also, um, being a police officer shooting on a range, I have come home with shell casings in my boots, stuck to my boots, so they are able to um, get places basically where you're stepping on them in your clothing um, where they're not going to be in the direct vicinity of where the, the weapon was fired. Now, you indicated that when you got to the scene on August 7th, 2019, it, it was not raining yet? Correct. How would you describe the rain that did come down that afternoon? Uh, it was substantial, it was very heavy, and it came very quick. And can you uh, estimate Could you estimate approximately how long after you got on scene that the rain started? I would say approximately within 25 to 30 minutes of arriving on scene, the rain started um, and became very heavy at times. And, and during that time, were there still individuals on the scene either rendering medical assistance to some of the people or trying to clean up? Um, I don't believe anybody was still on scene receiving any medical treatment at that time. I'm going to show you uh, again what's been marked as S205. S205, I think you had testified earlier, was a picture of one of the shell casings in the driveway? Yes. Or the area of one of the shell casings? Yes. Can you see the shell casing in this picture? No. Why not? Uh, it's submerged <clears throat> in water. And is this picture representative of other areas on that driveway or in that yard at the time that you uh, noticed the rain starting? Yes. Okay. 
think you were asked a question about whether you were aware if there was any sort of a camera uh, at the house the day that you were processing? Yes. Um, and I think you were asked if you knew that was there and if you collected it. Yes. Um, can you explain to the jury uh, what your role was or what you knew about that, that camera based on your experience as a crime scene officer? Uh, based on my experience as a crime scene detective, um, the camera was photographed there. Uh, we did examine that camera um, on scene. It was a cloud-based system, so that physical camera itself wouldn't be storing any of our, our data, any of our video. Um, it would be going to a cloud. Um, for example, like a ring. Um, ring is very common and it's a cloud-based system, so you can log into your account um, basically from a computer, a phone, a tablet, and you can kind of look at what's been going on um, through your, your cloud. And would that be something that you, and have you, do you have experience with those type of cameras based on your experience as a crime scene investigator? Uh, yes, that and personal. And I think the last question I had for you was you were asked if you had, had photographed uh, any of the defendant's clothes that you collected or process those with the IR camera for gunshot residue? I was asked that question, yes. Now you indicated that you did process uh, Lauren Canerac's clothing first? Yes. What was the reason you chose to uh, process those articles of clothing first? So when those articles were dried, um, <clears throat> we did re we did know that um, Ms. Canerac did receive two gunshots. Um, so after those, those articles of clothing were dried throughout the drying chamber, they were then photographed so we could see the defects. That night, um, during the actual crime scene investigation, we weren't able to see those defects based on how saturated and how wet the, the clothing was. So when they were taken back and dried, then they were examined for, for defects. And with respect to the IR camera and the, the looking for the gunshot residue, is there a reason that you chose her articles of clothing to check first? Yes, we did know that those articles of clothing, after examining them with our our, our eyes and a normal photography with our normal typical crime scene camera. Uh, we noticed bullet defects, so that's when we did use the IR camera to examine those articles of clothing with different lights and uh, filters. And based on not rep uh, identifying any gunshot residue on those articles of clothing, did that influence your decision not to photograph other items? Jackson yes. leading. It was a little bit leading, Mr. Shellhorn. Just did that, re rephrase your question. Based on your uh, examination of those articles of clothing, Ms. meaning Ms. Canerax, did that imp impact your investigation? Yes, uh, being that we had negative results with our, our IR camera, um, no other clothing was then photographed utilizing that IR camera. Judge, I don't have any further questions. Thank you. All right. <laughs> any um, sir, re re yes, sir, briefly, uh, Sir, based on your experience uh, with casings being ejected from a uh, handgun, would you agree that wherever they land are, are pretty unreliable and unpredictable? As to? As to where they land. Yes. And before you got there, with the number of people, could those specific casings that you've identified and marked as pieces of evidence, could they have been disturbed in all the chaos which would have made those locations unreliable? Yes. So based on your experience, would you agree with me that it would be almost impossible to make a determination as to where someone was standing when the weapon was fired based on where you marked those cases being found? That's correct. Nothing further. All right, you may step down. Thank you, Detective. <laughs> Thank you, Judge. Please don't discuss the case with anyone. You may have to be recalled at some other point in time. Yes, Thank sir. you. All right, call your next witness, Mr. Shallhorn. Judge, the state will next call Mary Haskins Gray. I'm not sure if she's outside. All right, have your detective check. Mary Haskins. All right, I think she's here, Mr. Shellhorn. Thank you, officer.